On a warm Australian summer afternoon, 69-year-old Andrew Hurd headed towards the calm waters of Gayenda Creek near Hinchinbrook Island. An experienced sailor and fisherman, Hurd had made annual trips to the Hinchinbrook Channel a tradition for the past decade. But on this particular February evening, a massive male saltwater crocodile had been watching him silently from the shadows. This is the chilling account of Andrew Hurd's fatal encounter with one of nature's most formidable predators. On February 11, 2021, Hurd set off on a small fiberglass boat for a fishing trip. As the salty sea air filled his senses, the natural sounds of the Australian outdoors made the perfect backdrop. All was calm except for the boat's motor and the occasional cry of a bird. The creek is a small offshoot of the massive Hinchinbrook Channel, wound through a dense tropical wilderness. It was a picture of calm, hosting a variety of Australian wildlife including dugongs, turtles, dingoes, and agile wallabies. However, among the diverse wildlife in the area, one apex predator stands out, the saltwater crocodile. These formidable creatures inhabit the creek and of course pose a significant threat to other animals and humans alike. Saltwater crocodiles are known as estuarine crocodiles, are the largest living reptiles, and are known for their powerful jaws, strong swimming abilities, and ability to inhabit both saltwater and freshwater environments. Their presence adds an element of danger to the tranquil beauty of the creek, reminding all who venture into its waters of the untamed and unpredictable nature of the Australian wild. Upon nightfall, the creek was shrouded in darkness, the only light coming from the stars above. The sound of the nocturnal creatures were the only thing breaking the silence, in fact, as Hurd's small boat bobbed along the water surface, a tiny speck in the vast ocean. It was Hurd's wife Erica who first noticed the concerning silence on the radio, a stark contrast from the usual updates of his location and catch that she would typically hear when her husband embarked on his fishing trip. This of course would trigger the first ripple of concern. As the hours rolled on, the silence from Hurd grew ominous, especially now that his absence was stretched far beyond the usual duration of his fishing trips. The clock ticked louder and louder in Erica's ears as time trudged forward, escalating her worry. No longer able to shake off the gnawing sense of dread, she would then contact the authorities. The break of dawn ushered in a search party to the quiet waters of Cayenda Creek. Their discovery, Hurd's overturned boat, its hull bearing the severe damage indicative of a crocodile attack. I'm sure he would have been very cranky with the crocs for wrecking the expensive fishing rod, wrecking the dinghy, but mostly taking him away from his family and friends. The serene facade of the creek was shattered, revealing a grim reality. Andrew Hurd had disappeared, and the only remnant of him left behind was his damaged dinghy. Upon further investigation, wildlife officers would find two crocodiles, a massive 4.86 meter male and a smaller 2.85 meter female, and the stomach contents of the two would reveal the terrifying truth. Human remains, later confirmed to be herds. Forensic testing is underway after human remains were discovered inside a four meter crocodile. Typically in the crocodile kingdom, it's an individual crocodile that's responsible for hunting and killing prey. But when it comes to sharing, normally it's only the dominant males that share large kills with females, especially during the breeding season. This behavior is a part of their natural courtship process, as well as a way for males to assert their dominance and strength. However, the case of Andrew Hurd painted a different, more complex picture. The predation of a human by two crocodiles simultaneously had never before been documented. During the time, this statement would have held true. However, in a poignant echo of the past Andrew Hurd tragedy, a devastating discovery was made just this past May. The partial remains of Kevin Darmody, a 65-year-old fishing enthusiast who had disappeared on a trip in far north Queensland's isolated wilderness, were found within a crocodile. Darmody was spending his day along the peaceful banks of the Kennedy River at Riniru, or Lakefield National Park, tragically oblivious to the looming danger. Nearby campers were haunted by the chilling sounds of screams and frantic splashing, pointing to a deadly confrontation between Darmody and a large crocodile. He would have known then that his, um, it was imminent, you know, when, when you let out a scream like that, and that's pretty daunting to think about it like that. Authorities later speculated that Darmody may have ventured to the water's edge to retrieve a fishing lure, only to be abruptly seized by a massive saltwater crocodile. The search for Darmody quickly turned into a race against time with an urgent rescue effort involving the police dive squad. The search came to a grim end when wildlife officers euthanized two crocodiles suspected of involvement in what turned out to be a fatal attack. 
The pair of salties, measuring 4.1 meters and 2.8 meters in length, were found about 1.5 kilometers upstream from Darmody's last known location, and a subsequent necropsy on the captured reptiles would reveal a sorrowful revelation. Human remains were found in one of the crocs. But despite this, investigators firmly believe that both crocs were in fact involved in the initial attack, eerily similar to the one that tragically claimed Andrew Heard's life. The stories of Andrew Heard and Kevin Darmody remind us of the need for ongoing research, awareness, and measures to ensure the safety of both humans and wildlife. And upon reflecting on these incidents, it's clear that the outcomes for both Heard and Darmody weren't just isolated tragedies, but a pattern that presents key lessons. Um, we do have to expect up here in far north Queensland that a lot of our waterways do inhabit crocodiles, especially in remote areas. There are a lot of larger crocodiles in the Lakefield area. Both men embarked on what were expected to be serene fishing trips, unknowingly entering the danger zone within the very waters that they cherished, and unfortunately both would also see their lives cut short by salties, in circumstances that hauntingly mirrored each other, commencing with an unsettling silence, escalating with intense searches, and culminating in the grim revelations of their fate. He was just a really good bloke, really accommodating, knew how to look after the tourists. He thought he had to deal with the crocodiles, you don't touch me, I don't touch you. Your soul be free. The anchor just come, and your sails be filled with following winds. If this episode piqued your interest, then our previous episode about multiple shark attacks that occurred just days apart is likely to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video.